this question talks about a neutron star. A little bit of background for context. Neutron stars are star that the gravity has become so strong that the proton and electrons of individual atom is squished together to become neutrons. So these are incredibly dense bodies. As you can see, the mass is basically the mass of the sun here, all squished into a sphere of 10 kilometer radius, right? Way smaller than the Earth. So you can see how incredibly dense it is. And as things collapse in and shrink in size, the spin rate increases due to the conservation of angular momentum. We'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. But here, they're just giving us these numbers and they just want this rotational kinetic energy. Well, of course there's energy involved, right? Because if you look at a spinning body, in this case, a sphere, each individual point on the object, if it say rotates counterclockwise, has some speed associated with it, right? Things on the outside goes a little faster, things on the inside goes a little slower, right? Each point has an associated R away from the rotational axis. The kinetic energy, as we used to define, is one half mv squared. But each of these little bits of mass, don't worry about this next bit, you're not expected to reproduce this, but just so that you see that things didn't come out of thin air, is that each of these little bits of mass will have associated with them some translational speed, which is r times omega, right, depending on whatever the r is, all squared. And we add them up for every single point on the body, right? It's a sum. But if it's a sum of tiny, tiny little things, we call it an integral. If you haven't covered integrals yet, for our purposes, just understand as we're adding up all these different little bits of things. And because we're talking about energy as a scalar, so it doesn't matter what all the direction is, so it's actually quite nice to look at the energy in this way. But to clean things up a bit, you can see that for the entire body, well, the one half comes out, and then for the entire body, the omega is the same for every single point. So we can factor that out of the sum. And so we're left with this thing in the middle, which is r square dm. And so this becomes a thing that is independent of how fast you spin, but instead it's a function of how heavy the thing is and how that mass is distributed around the body. So for all kinds of purposes, this integral, this chunk here, is sort of like mass, but for rotational motion. Right? If we group that together and call that the moment of inertia, I, you can see that we end up with a form that's very similar to one half mv squared, right? Like we have always replaced v with omega, we can now replace m with this i thing. And that's rotational kinetic energy. It's the sum of all the energy of all these individual parts going in all different direction as an object rotates. But then of course, I don't expect you to be doing integrals of all kinds of funny shapes. That's a little bit beyond our math prerequisites. So instead, we'll make use of these tables of well-known results for well-known shapes, pretty regular shapes. In this case, we have a star, which is a sphere, and we're going to assume it's a solid uniform sphere, uniform density. And so if we look up on this table here, we just have to kind of find the right shape with the right axis. So we have a solid sphere, so that's the one we're talking about. And the axis is indeed a diameter, which is a line that goes right through the center. And so we just have to sub this expression in, 2 over 5 m r square, where we've been given the m, we've given the r, so those are all easy to calculate. The omega, in the end, we want it in radians per second first before we sub it in. So if you look at omega as some angular displacement over some time, what they give us is it has a period of 0.02 seconds. What does a period mean? It's the amount of time it takes to go through one whole circle. So in one full circle, how much angle do you cover? That's 2 pi radians. In the time of the period, which we use the symbol big T. So that's 2 pi divided by 0 0.02 seconds. Right, that's radians per second. 
So we stop that in there, 2 pi over 0 0.02 radians per second, all squared, with the actual number subbed in. Oh, 10 kilometers. Oh, sneaky. Okay, let's just squeeze that up here. 10 km multiplied by 1 km on the bottom, 1,000 meters on top. You can probably do this one yet, but just to be complete, mr square, omega square. Some big amount of number because we do have a big amount of mass. And the unit is indeed kilograms meter square per second square. Again, radians can disappear as we wish, which is a jewel. We'll just keep the one digits because the mass has only been given in one digit. But this question, its purpose is twofold, right? It introduces the expression for kinetic energy, which to no surprise, one half mv square becomes one half i omega square. But it also introduces the concept of the moment inertia i and how to use the table to get us the i that we want for common shapes.